Hey everyone, it's Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with the video that I promised earlier this week. Here it is. I ordered some of the wet tissue paper and I think this is Yaki uh, off of Amazon. From what I understand from a chat group that I am, that this is not the best quality, but for me, it is. Um, it was not horribly expensive. And since I'm just puttering around with it, sorry about the crinkling, I have to get the paper out of the bag. Um, I think it's just fine. So one side's shiny, the other side is kind of shiny, but not as much as the, I think, the right facing side. So these are big, huge sheets. Um, this stuff will last me for years and years <laughs> because it's huge. Let me, let me put this down on the proper side here. All right, so this is like, it covers up everything, doesn't it? Um, let me look on the package in here. It says, oh, it doesn't say. Shoot, I think this is 24 by 27 inches. I mean, it's huge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold this into quarters because it'll be much more manageable for what I want. And then I'm going to cut it. It may not be perfectly cut, but I can always trim it up later after I'm finished. There we go. All right, let me get my scissors and cut this so that I'm not sorry later that I didn't make it smaller to work with. Okay, so there's one section, and then I guess I really don't need to cut this other side, do I? Oh, no. Okay. All right, so I'm cutting this down to a manageable size for me. So I'm going to take this pure methanol cellulose and use it on this paper here. It, the directions on the back say, uh, let's see, where's the English version? Uh, mix one tablespoon and half a cup of cold water. Stir until mixed. Let stand one hour to overnight before use. So I'm going to do this in front of you so you can see what this is. And then I'm going to let it sit for, it says a minimum of one hour. Then I'll come back and I'll start on what I'm going to do with it. All right, so I have one half cup of cold water in this jar. And I have one tablespoon measuring spoon. I'm going to open this stuff up and my measuring spoon is not going to fit in there. Okay, so there's three teaspoons to one tablespoon. Let's see if we can do this. There's one. And then I have some disposable chopsticks from a local Chinese restaurant. And I figured this will be a good thing to use because I can always throw it in the trash. I have a feeling this is a form of cornstarch or a starchy substance. Now I did see, I did do some research on it. I did do some research on this when I was looking up these kind of cellulose type thing. They're from, I think, from plant matter. And one of them was some kind of a fruit or a root. I don't know if it's called the dragon root or the dead dragon root or some kind of thing like that. You can look it up on, um, on Google. But the point is, is that I'm not sure because I don't know how this will affect my food items here, I'm just using this stuff that I probably will use for paint water, the stick will go in the trash, and the measuring spoons I use in the art room. So there's no food contact with this other than this right here because I am unsure exactly how this is going to go. And I probably don't want to use things from my house that we eat off of for this. It's getting thick. It feels like gravy. 
like the thickness of a gravy or more like um, water with a a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch in it, how it thickens up when it's cold. And it always has to be cold water. When you mix the water and the cornstarch, it always has to be cold water. So I imagine this is along the same line. This is getting very thick. And they just tell you to keep stirring, keep stirring, and then you have to let it sit. And what happens is it congeals. I'm not gonna let it sit overnight because I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's a good idea to Leave it that long. Let's stand one hour to overnight. I think this is, I hope this is not gritty. Although I am seeing grit around the edge, it might be from the stuff I didn't get stirred in originally very well. It's probably a poor choice of a jar because there's little nooks and crannies in here in the pattern because the pattern's on the, on, is on the, inside of the jar. Oh, it's on the outside. Okay, there it is. It's on the inside and the outside. The part I'm feeling it's smooth is where the label goes. All right, so this is stirred up. And I probably will have to stir it up again once it is completely congealed. Yuck. All right, so I'm going to leave this sitting here. I'm going to go find something else to do, and I'll be back in an hour. Okay, so it's been an hour. I went and vacuumed and did some household chores to keep my mind off of coming in here and playing in this thing, and it was hard. So the demos that I watched have you dip your paintbrush in here, which is thick as jelly, and you brush from the inside out. This is like funky mashed potatoes, but no good flavor. <laughs> Yeek! Very gelatinous. And I did it on the glass because I have more room to maneuver in the on the glass than I do anywhere else in here. On the, you know, the Tim Holtzy thing. Tonic, whatever it is, I don't know. Anyway, so let me... Oops, my ceiling fan's on, and it is causing yeah, the paper to go everywhere. All right, so I looked up while I was waiting about cellulose. Cellulose is basically like a glue for book binding. Um, so let me say this was not a cheap experiment, but I'm all for trying something new. But if you were going to do this, and you're going to use this um, this kind of tissue, I imagine you could probably use some kind of a medium and not do this. Just thinking out loud. All right, so I'm going to put this smack dab in the middle. I'm going to brush some on here. I hope. This works. This has soaked in olive oil, so it may not stick. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I didn't iron it. I saw a video where somebody irons the paper after crinkling it. I suppose that's for sewing, but I don't really want to crinkle the paper up. It's already been beaten up enough as it is. All right, so it kind of mashes it down onto the paper there, onto the tissue paper. Remember, this is a special kind of tissue paper. This is not the stuff you can buy at Dollar Tree. All right, so I'm going to put this in half. It's starting to stick already. Ooh, that was quick. No, not yet. <laughs> Dead gum ceiling fan. Oh. Okay. There we go. So... I'm just encasing this into the tissue. I see there's a bubble there. Um, I wonder if I can undo this. I can't believe I just said that. Uh, yes, I can. Slowly. Nope, not doing it. <laughs> if, nope, probably not a good idea. <laughs> so let me stick this back here and whoop, 
straighten it out. I don't know how well this is going to go. I mean, I just really don't know. I've never done this kind of a thing before. But I've encased my Mamagami paper in this stuff. I don't think that I really need to put anything on top of this, but we're going to give it a shot. And I have way too much of this stuff in this glass jar to use it up today. So I am going to put a lid on it and put it in the fridge. It says you can put it in the fridge for up to a week, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, it won't stay in there a week. I'll slowly whittle my way through all of this before I do anything like that because I just don't think it's probably going to last that long. See, and I have bubbles inside there where I didn't, I guess I didn't get it sticky enough on the inside. I didn't do a very good job brushing it on. And now there's this bubble inside there, and I didn't go all the way to the edge. You can tell where I didn't go, I didn't do very well, because you can peel some of it up here. I might go back over, there we go, and kind of squish it down. The one thing about doing this on a non-porous surface is all I can, I can take a wet paper towel and clean this off. All right, so we'll see how this goes. I don't know, I'm a little skeptical that this is going to go well. <laughs> Especially since I know I've got bubbles in here. I might stick a pin in there. I wonder if I could put a, a pin in it like a pokey tool and poke that bubble and then put stuff in there that might keep it from bubbling up later. Let's see, there's a big one right there. Well, it, it looks cool, but I'm not really sure what purpose this serves. Should I should I think that way? I don't know. I don't know what purpose this exactly this serves. You encase things in it, but that are clear. I understand that. And maybe this is way easier than using matte medium because you're afraid it's going to tear your paper. And you want something that's a little more translucent. I'm thinking that's why people use this stuff. I'm going to take this and hang it on the clothesline in my office in here, my studio, and see how it does. And I'll be back to you when it gets dry, when it gets dried. Okay, I'm back with another portion for the video. Let me get this out of the way and show you. I put, I hung this up on the clothesline that I have in my art room, and I let it dry. And it's, the this paper is very crunchy and this is too because it's encased in that uh, methyl cellulose. Um, I was watching a lady and I'm looking at her name is Louise Janetta. It's L O U I S E J A N N E T T A. Um, and she likes way different papers and textures than I like. So I thought I would try to emulate some of the stuff that she's done. So this was a relatively easy piece right here, just putting some of my artwork in between the um, the uh, wet tissue paper. <laughs> Sorry. So it's been four or five hours, and I left this in the refrigerator, but when I got it out, it was so stiff, there was no way I was going to work with it. So I added some water, and I stirred, 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 and now it's going to be a little easier to work with although I still think this is way too thick so let's see do I have any water oh I have a little bit of water here I'm gonna sneak water out of my painting jar add a little more water to it I think it would be a lot easier to spread I, I saw other people say that you can thin it down and I think that it needs to be thinned down I have no idea what I'm going to do with this paper, but I was so intrigued by these ingredients and these items and the end result because, frankly, I've never, I mean, I've, 
crumpled up paper before and made it nice and soft, but I never sealed it with anything, never knew it had a Japanese name, never knew the origin. I didn't know diddly squat. And still don't. <laughs> but I want to play with it, so I'm going to put you on fast forward while I tinker around with this, and then um, there'll be another segment where I show you all the papers that I've messed with. Sealing the other stuff up, I went through um, some papers that I had that I made in fire school, and I thought that putting a little more color in my stuff would be really cool. Now, I did not use olive oil on this paper because, I have to tell you, that stuff takes forever to dry, even it, it, and it may never dry because I just overused it. But this is regular deli paper, and seriously, I don't really think that you need you need anything with it other than maybe your hands get a little roughed up. You might want a little bit of hand lotion on your hands, but I'm not going to use olive oil again because I just did not like that it was greasy paper. So I'm just taking the deli paper that I made a jelly print of. It's blue and green and I'm going to keep crumpling it up. Um, when I go to watch TV night tonight, with my husband, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the stack of paper with me and no and annoy the crap out of him by crumpling paper all night. <laughs> I think it'll be so much fun. <laughs> okay, so let me continue on crumpling paper. Oh, wait. Here's a big piece I found that was a jelly plate with a stencil. Their leaves. And I think I'm going to put this in between the other tissue paper again to leave it as a background. I just love doing this. I like how it, the paper feels when you're done crumpling it. It feels like material. Um, it just just feels so much neat. And it does get smaller. I mean, it, it, it does shrink because you have so many folds and wrinkles in it. How can it not? So I'm going to use this and sandwich this in between all these papers and see what I come up with. I don't know what I'm going to do with the papers. This is not the point of this video. The, the point of the video is just having a good time, learning something new, something that I might could use at a later date. I have the supplies now, and I probably will use them because I am really enjoying this. Crumpling up paper that I intend on using in art. Now that's something, huh? Um... Okay, so I'll crumple all this paper up, and when I'm done crumpling all my paper up, I will come back and we will glue it on the sheets of the tissue paper. Alrighty, I am back with my smushy pile, and I'm going to go through it real quick. I um, crumpled everything. I did not put any of the um, methocellulose on it. This is all just crumpled up paper from, you know, doing it back and forth. There's a couple pieces that do have it on there, but most of them do not. Um, these guys, the skinny ones, they have it. These are just in cuts from other stuff that I did that I saved. I Don't ask me why. You know how we are. Um, this one has nothing on it. 
and it turned out just fine. This one, um, I can't tell because it's latex, um, latex, acrylic paint, so it feels, there's nothing on this one, just crumpled. This one has nothing on it, nothing. This one, on the other hand, does. And to be honest with you, I cannot tell any difference in the texture or the feel of the paper other than I just remember I put it on, I think I put it on the back. Because I saw a woman in a video who said, you don't really only need to put it on the back. So I did. So this is the one that has it on the back. This one, oh mercy, I don't remember, but I think I did. I think this one has it, but I can't tell. I, I just don't remember certain ones. This one is very papery feeling. I must have crushed this thing darn near within an inch of its life. I think there might be some of that stuff on there, but honestly, I can't tell you. This one I did on my own without that stuff on it, and guess what? We got a hoe. So, you know, it's okay. This one... Uh, hopefully in my video it showed me doing, well, I think I cut that part out while I was doing these. I can't remember if this stuff's on this or not. But this feels so much like cloth. I think this one had it on there and I can't tell, I really can't tell the difference in how it crumpled or how soft it is or textured. It all feels the same basically to me. This one is not enough, crumpled up enough because it still sounds like paper. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, then that's all the ones that I did yesterday. Uh, this is on here because of the reflection of the, the light. All right, so then in the video I was doing, I think I cut some of the video out. Oop, there's a bubble. I need to finish that. Um, I put the papers in the wet tissue. I'm not sure what I'm doing. You already saw this one. And then during the video, I was doing this one. Earlier in the video, I was doing this one. I ripped it down here on the corner. So I saw a woman in another video take the tissue and just put it right over it, and she was done. Didn't bother her that it ripped. And it mended nicely. It's just a little thicker here on the end. And you can see through it where the rip is if you look through the back. Look at the back side. Look at that ship. That looks awesome. All right, so this is lovely paper. But I have some... I have some reservations about this. First of all, you can crumple this up with nothing on it and it turns out just the same as if you put the methylcellulose or any other kind of uh, treatment on the paper. I think one of the main reasons why you put this on here is that it helps to strengthen the paper while you're crumpling it up or after you've crumpled it up so it doesn't disintegrate. Like, you know, I have a hole in one of these guys. I did not put anything on it. And when you do this, you need to be a little careful. I'm suspecting the reason people put the methylcellulose on it or the um, gum paste on it is because of something like the hole I put in the paper. It helps to strengthen it and prevent that from happening. Um, providing you don't get carried away, it'll, you know, save the whole thing. So you can do this without spending one dime. Just, I'm just telling you that. Because this stuff is very expensive. So if you just crumple it up over and over and over, and you fold it, they, everybody I've seen do this technique, they fold from the inside, do around the edges like this, and then they crumple up the paper. And they just go back and forth. This is really not a hard thing to do and it doesn't cost you any money to make your paper look like material, feel like material. You don't have to put one thing on it to make it do that. I remember when I was a kid, we did it. I think it was in Girl Scouts. Um, but we didn't put any stuff on it. It just from wearing the fibers down and breaking them down from just squashing it and going back and forth with it. That's all it needs. This one needs more kneading. It will get, it will do, I will do it later off camera. There's no point in doing it now. Okay, so then these, um, Louise uh, Janetta did it so that she could fold things and put them as pages in a book. 
she took what she had and she put things like yarn and confetti and all kinds of wonderful stuff in between the papers and then folded them in half and she's sewing them into a book. I'm not so sure I want to do that. So I see this technique is might not be for me. I don't know for sure, but I'm certainly not going to get rid of any of this stuff because I really like the papers that I sealed inside here. And see, I got a big old bubble. Um, it's an interesting technique. I think, just my observation, that this looks really good in the in the paper. Not this stuff so much as this. So I've seen a lot of people do magazine pages where that gives it that lovely crinkly look like an old painting. I really like this. Maybe not my doodle papers, my stamp papers so much, but this. This is it right here. This is awesome. All right, so that's my observation about that. Um, I doubt seriously I will do anything to this piece of paper because I'm, I'm not really sure. All right, so now you've seen all the papers that I did, and you, you've, got, you've got an idea of what I'm up to. And this is going to be the end of part one. I have a project that you cannot see on the side because that will be what I do with, the, with a piece of this Mamagami paper. I'm very excited about this. I'm combining two things into one project, two techniques, and I hopefully it will turn out nicely. I'll let you know. <laughs> you can watch part two. All right, everybody, so I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.